so what is the basic ultrasound principle the ultrasound imaging is based on the principle of generation of sound waves beyond the audible range that is above 20 kilohertz frequencies used for ultrasound are higher than those in audible range and typically vary from 2 to 15 megahertz for diagnostic procedures these waves have a power to penetrate different tissues of the body at different speed and reflected back from the tissue surface the amplitude of reflected energy is used to generate ultrasound images so what are the applications of ultrasound in anesthesia the main applications are firstly ultrasound can be used for vascular access such as for venous cannulation central venous cannulation arterial cannulation ultrasound guided regional anesthesia blocks trans esophageal echocardiography and chronic pain management so it's it's the basic presentation so we'll be discussing about ultrasound for vascular access as well as for regional anesthesia so it is a form of acoustic energy the ultrasound waves it is generated by a piezoelectric crystal in specialized transducer probes so these are the transducer probes that generate ultrasound waves basically the they convert electrical energy into mechanical energy so electrical energy from the machine is transmitted to the transducer probe and these transducer probes then convert it into mechanical energy and send the this energy to the body parts and then according to the frequencies reflected back to them they generate a ultrasound image so these are the two main probes which are used very commonly first is the curved probe which is only used when anatomical sight is limited now this is a low frequency probe but a high depth probe so it is used for the for visualizing very deep structures but if we talk about linear array probe the linear probe it is a high frequency but low depth probe so that means only superficial structures are visualized best and it provides best visualization for superficial structures some other probes are also there like a pencil shaped probe is there which is used for cardiac echo so if we talk about the high frequency probes that is the curvilinear probes they give a better better resolution of the image the penetration is less so that only uh, superficial images can be seen and it is used for ultrasound imaging of superficial structures uh, limited to 2 to 4 centimeters depth from skin surface mid range frequency probes that is 5 to 10 megahertz they are for slightly deeper structures 5 to 6 centimeters if we talk about the low frequency probe that is the 2 to 5 megahertz probe it is basically used for imaging of deep structures for example a proximal sciatic nerve as much as 10 centimeters deep but the low frequency gives it a poor, poor quality of image so the image produced will not be better resoluted it will be a poor, poorer quality of image as compared to the higher frequency probes and it gives less resolution also so these are two images generated by different probes first is the curvilinear probe which is a less frequency probe so usually the depth seen is higher side but the resolution is less and secondly this is the linear probe which is showing the image in a linear cross section so we can notice the difference in the shape as well as the scope of the images in the curvilinear probe the sh uh, shape is also curvilinear and the linear probe it gives us a rectangular image so what are the parts of ultrasound one is the transmitter it the transmitter generates precisely timed high amplitude voltage to energize the transducer so it is located proximal to the transducer which we have talked about already transducer it converts the electrical energy to mechanical energy and vice versa it basically serves two functions first of all it converts electrical energy provided by the transmitter into acoustic pulses directed into the patient and once these acoustic pulses are reflected back to the transducer it receives the reflected echoes uh, and the receiver and processor the receiver and the processor these detect and amplify the back scattered energy and manipulate the reflected signals for display and processor gives us a ultrasound image so uh, transmitter gives it energy to transducer it emits uh, ultrasound waves these ultrasound waves hit the body surface some are transmitted and some are reflected the ultrasound waves that are returned or reflected are again reflected back to the transducer and then the processor which ultimately forms an image 
so it requires return of sound wave to probe it is just like a boomerang the probes rapidly cycle from transmission to reception cycles can be 7000 per second returning waves again are converted into electrical impulses and the comp further computer processing creates a two dimensional image there are some uh, very frequently used terms which are to give you a basic idea if you talk about the uh, parameters on the ultrasound image one is echogenicity that is that refers to the tissue texture in gray scale so a tissue can be hypoechoic or hyperechoic so if the tissue is appearing low level gray scale pattern then it would be hypoechoic as compared to other structure weakly it would be weakly reflected but if the uh, if the surface or the structure is hyperechoic that means it would appear brighter and whiter on the gray scale pattern and it would be strong the waves would be strongly reflected so the amount of waves reflected from a surface will determine with uh, how a structure will be seen on the ultrasound image for a structure which reflects the waves heavily it will be shown as a very bright and white structure on the image that would be hyperechoic such as bone and connective tissue and hypoechoic would be muscles isoechoic would be same or similar echogenicity to the surrounding tissue and anechoic would be completely black eco free that is fluid in the vessels if we see uh, suppose this is an uh, exemplary image of popliteal area so if we see one is the sciatic nerve the structure numbered one is the sciatic nerve with stippled honeycombed appearance this appears hyperechoic as it can be seen as a bright bright structure if we talk about the second part that is the adipose tissue that is hypoechoic that is uh, that is more gray scale and more that is less brighter and more darker that would be hypoechoic if we talk about the muscles that is the structure 3 these are seen as hyperechoic facial lines on muscle surface if you talk about four that is the vein so veins the vascu vascular structures mainly appear anoechoic so no no visualization is seen inside the vein so it is anoechoic and it would be partially collapsed under pressure to ultrasound transmitter probe then fifth is popliteal artery this would also be anoechoic but it would be pulsating as compared to venous sixth is bone this will appear hyperechoic rim with hypoechoic shadow so this uh, ultrasound waves are uh, heavily reflected from a bone surface so it it appears hyperechoic on the surface so if we talk about another image like of that of a thorax so number 1 is the rib bony structure it would appear hyperechoic second is the pleura so pleura would be seen as hypoechoic and then if we talk about the neurovascular bundles they would appear like this like honeycomb and number 4 is muscles and number 5 are fascia so terminology is on the machine one is depth which determines how much depth we are going to see in the machine gain gain improves the operator's ability to distinguish structures on the screen so basically if we increase gain we can improve the our ability to distinguish structures it controls the magnitude of amplification given to all returning echoes so it basically amplifies our signal a costing shadowing and an isotropy it is a sample type of ultrasound machine this is the monitor this is the console and these are the stations for the probes this is the linear probe this is the curvilinear probe and this is the pencil type probe which is used for cardiac echo here we can see there is a gain button there is a depth button this this is uh, keyboard for typing and this is for audio so if you talk about the two most common views the one is long axis view and another one is short axis view if we keep the probe on the skin surface such that the structure is parallel such that the structure is parallel to the orientation of the probe if we talk about suppose we talk about a nerve a muscle that is going parallel to this uh, probe so it would appear as long axis on the ultrasound view but if we keep the probe perpendicular to the structure passing through below it it will appear as a short axis view the example see uh, this if we visualize the musculocutaneous nerve it would be on the long axis view if we keep the probe parallel to the musculocutaneous nerve it would appear as a, a long structure that is the long axis view if we keep the probe perpendicular to it then it would appear as a circular or a, a short axis view structure 
Now there are two approaches basically one is the in plane approach one is the out of plane approach. So if we talk about the in plane approach if we keep the probe like this and uh, from the side of the probe if we are entering the needle then basically the image is produced by the center part of this ultrasound probe. So if we enter the needle from the side side of the ultrasound probe then the whole needle will be visualized in the path in the ultrasound image this would be in plane approach in which the whole needle will be seen traversing the image. Another one is the out of plane approach in which we uh, insert the needle at a perpendicular perpendicular angle from the ultrasound probe in this if we talk about the images produced like this so if we insert a needle perpendicular to it then only needle tip would be visible to us that we can visualize here not the whole needle but only the tip will be visualized so uh, this is the in plane approach in which images form like this so any uh, needle inserting entering from here would be seen as a complete needle in the in plane approach if we enter the needle perpendicularly to the probe then it will be appear as a bright dot that is the out of plane approach so this is so basically these two are short axis views we are keeping the probe perpendicular and by the direction of needle entry this is the in plane approach this is the out of plane approach if we keep the long axis view then this would be the in plane approach this would be the long axis view out of the plane approach orientation marker is also seen very commonly on the uh, probes so we have to correlate it with the uh, orientation marker on the screen to see whether the structures are inverted or normally aligned so is there any evidence of benefit in the use of ultrasound guidance in regional anesthesia yes definitely it has many important advantages first of all the block performance is fast fewer needles passes have to be given for uh, ultrasound guided regional block faster initial onset of blockade possibly reduce local anesthetic requirements and chances of toxicity and direct visualization of needle should reduce the rate of intraneural and intravascular puncture arteries appear round in cross section these are these are generally pulsatile and not are easily not compressed with pressure applied on the probe but veins appear irregular vary in size with respiration and are easily compressible with the probe nerves are hyperechoic with the stippled honeycomb structure hypo anechoic fascicles on hyperechoic background of connective tissue surrounding them so this is a common structure uh, one is then there is a color doppler function in which if we turn on the color doppler function of the machine we would uh, be able to differentiate the vascular structures from the avascular structures so if we uh, turn on the color doppler arteries and veins would be uh, identified from the other structures arteries would appear uh, a, a color would be seen in arteries pulsating whereas vein in the, in the vein the color would be static and these would both be of different colors one would be red and one would be blue depending on the flow of blood from the probe pulse wave doppler can help in identifying whether the structure is a artery or a vein if we keep the uh, probe on that structure and then we turn on the pulse do wave doppler function then if it is near to artery or artery is there then arterial waveform will be produced probe manipulation can be done by four methods one is applying pressure second is alignment in this is in this manner rotation of the whole probe and tilting so image can be changed uh, if you talk about ultrasound guided central venous cannulation the advantages are firstly identification of vein becomes very easy any variable anatomy is found in the patient then it can be detected very easily detection of any intravascular thrombi if present can also be detected and avoidance of inadvertent arterial puncture can be avoided this is the uh, usual technique through uh, this is a common structure this is the ultrasound view of the uh, carotid artery as well as the uh, internal jugular vein this is the carotid artery which can be seen pulsatile and this is the internal jugular vein just lateral to it so peripheral nerve blocks has its advantages in ultrasound direct visualization of neural structures can be there with ultrasound direct visualization of related structures like blood vessels and tendons which help to identify nerves guidance of needle is under real time visualization complications like intravascular and intraneural injection can be avoided uh, the spread of local anesthetic can be uh, can be monitored and it allows repositioning of the needle after an initial injection to allow better delivery of local anesthetic to areas that may not be completely blocked with a single dose thank you